I noticed something recently. There's always the pressure to be super creative all the time as an artist, but that spark of inspiration isn't always there. I see amazing painters online and I often think, how did they think of that? I wish I thought of that. But then I thought most professional artists, including the greatest masters of all time, they return to the same ideas time and time again. They work in series, really delve into an idea and explore all of its possibilities. But it all stems from one idea, one spark of inspiration. So that's where this painting came from. If you saw my previous video, I've already painted a girl slash butterfly combo before, but I just thought, why do I have to think of a fresh idea for every single painting I do? There's so many different ways to make this one idea. I can change the layout, composition, facial expression, color scheme, butterfly breed, lighting, mood, everything can be different. It's funny, as soon as I started to imagine other ways to make this painting and different things that I could try, more and more ideas just started popping into my head for other paintings too. It's almost like starting the creativity ball rolling is the hardest part, but once it starts, it snowballs fast. But let's not get ahead of myself too much. Those are ideas for future paintings and future videos. But I guess if there's a little bit of advice there, if you're ever stuck for inspiration, your past self may have already had a pretty good idea that you can just steal. As Picasso once said, great artists steal. Why not just steal from yourself? Back to this painting here. Like I said, this is going to be part of a new series of my work. The last girl butterfly painting that I made, called Monarch, featuring a Monarch butterfly, was very heavy in the warm orange range. And for this painting, I really wanted to cool things down, using flesh tones with cool undertones, and a cool bluish background, and much paler butterflies with the swallowtail variety. <laughs> Maybe it's the spring to the previous painting summer. The portrait section is pretty much in now. The first layer is anyway. About 80% of the way there. A few more details and tweaks and things like that. So it's now onto the butterflies, which is gonna be the trickier bit because I think this is more of a mental game. It can be quite tricky sometimes, just the repetition. You know, you've gotta keep your concentration levels up to keep your consistency high when you're essentially just doing the same thing on repeat. In this case, four times. You know, it's it's easy to let concentration slip. And to be really honest, boredom start to creep in. You know, that is the, a reality of painting and making art. Sometimes it is a bit boring. So get an audio book on, a really thick, juicy, nerdy fantasy novel. That should get me through. <laughs> Let's get back to it. I got a comment on my previous video asking me to talk about which color paints I use and it's interesting really, I usually use a very limited palette for almost all of my paintings. I only really ever six colors. The six colors are ivory black, van dyke brown, cadmium red, yellow ochre and usually just some kind of blue that I've got lying around which is usually a Windsor or a cobalt blue and then titanium white to finish it off. So why these colors? And the main reason is they're opaque paints. I come from a tattooing background and all tattoo inks are opaque. They're made to be very permanent on people's skin. So 
when I started to learn how to oil paint. That made the transition into oil painting feel more natural to me and just, it kind of just stuck. That's pretty much why I paint straight onto white canvas without doing the classical burnt umber sienna style underpaintings. My first layer is usually a fairly complete layer that is pretty close to the finished thing. For me, I'm all about painting in a way that is most comfortable for you. There is so many rules to oil painting and it is intimidating to start, but my philosophy is to just remove as many barriers as you can and just get started. I remember the day that I stopped listening to everyone else's how to oil paint advice and just did what felt natural to me is the day that I really started to make strides. So by all means, take what I say with a pinch of salt. I only filmed the first butterfly. I figured watching the same process four times wouldn't make for an entertaining watch. Besides, this was the biggest of the four and it had the most going on. Again, this is just the first layer and my aim is to get relatively close to the final thing, but I'm not stressing too much about super smooth blends or perfect details. There's gonna be a couple layers that go on top so we can fix all these things later. My aim is essentially just to get rid of all of that white on the canvas and if I can be about 80% of the way finished by the time that last bit of white is gone then we're ahead of the game. If we're not, no drama. So the butterflies are in. First layer is complete and as first layers go, this one took a while. It was way trickier than I thought it was going to be. But Moving on to the next layers, starting to render and refine. It brings with it its own new challenges because the artistic side is done. The creativity of it is complete because technically this is a finished painting almost. You know, you look at it and you can see it's a, it's a girl, it's butterflies. So we're not adding anything to the image. We're just refining and executing the idea. I guess boring is the wrong word, but it certainly slows down. It's really exciting starting a painting, working out ideas, sketching compositions, throwing paint down, and just seeing the white of the canvas disappear really quickly. It feels like you make a lot of progress really fast, but then as it slows, it's easy to lose enthusiasm because I've got blank canvases behind me and lots of ideas in my head that I'm far more excited to get out and onto canvas. Well, we have to just keep diligently working away, getting this to the level that I want it to be at. And that is always the most challenging part of the painting, I think. What well, this is, if you stick to it, this is the stage where it really becomes something quite special. This is a puzzle. The full painting is a big jigsaw puzzle that piece by piece comes together. And that is basically how these paintings get made. A series of jigsaws, even back in the design idea stage. Most of my composition has already been figured out before I've even started painting. I have a process of gathering huge amounts of references and build a collage of images in Procreate on the iPad and then stitch them together, literally like a jigsaw. But very often, that design looks all Frankenstein together. It's only when you start painting and those ideas are mashing together into one cohesive artwork. And that's really the first time that you start to see the ideas come to life, piece by piece by piece. Anima. So I actually stumbled across this word a couple times during the making of this painting in various doom scrolling and it kind of stuck in my mind. Carl Jung used the term in psychology to refer to the feminine aspect of the male unconscious mind. I know, that's kind of deep for me. 
And in many languages, the word anima appears to mean the soul. I thought that was quite interesting, but weirdly enough, but the Greek word for soul is psyche, which in ancient Greek also meant butterfly. The Greek goddess Psyche is even often depicted with butterfly wings. So I guess multiple roads led me to this name, which I thought was pretty cool. Anyway, here you can see that the painting is really starting to come together now with the details and the texture of the skin, ready for the most exciting part, the hair strands going over the top. So I'm just gonna stop talking and let you enjoy the satisfying shots of that section. made it this far thanks so much for watching and before i leave you with the final shots please feel free to subscribe for more painting and art videos and if you like my work check out my store for prints and other cool stuff like that so yeah here's the final painting anima